Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 60374, Fire Command Truck from the LEGO City theme. This set contains 502 pieces, 3 minifigures, and will retail for $64.99 in the US. This set does not come out until January 1st, 2023, but it was sent to me early by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm doing early reviews of a bunch of 2023 sets, there's already quite a few up on the channel, but I've got more 2023 City sets, as well as Ninjago, Monkey Kid, Minecraft, Lego Super Mario, Lego Friends, and more. So if any of that sounds like something you'd be interested in, by liking the video and subscribing to the channel, it'll help put those videos in your feed as soon as they're posted, and also really help support me in the channel. But with all that being said, let's get on to the review. So here is the fire command truck, and I think this thing actually looks really cool. Very different from just a generic fire truck. Just from appearances alone, it seems like more armored. It almost seems like a battle version of a fire truck, but that's my Ninjago brain talking. But no, I do like, I would say, different take on an iconic build, because we get Lego fire trucks all the time. This is a nice way to mix things up because it is still a fire truck, but it's different than other ones you've gotten in the past. Out of the very front of the truck, you have this little hook on a rope. You can turn this to bring the hook out. Unfortunately, there's not like a gear on the side to turn it like there normally is, so you have to manually go in here and do this by hand or just pull on the string. That like is doable, but it's not the most convenient. And if you pull on the string, pulling it out's not too hard, but then getting it back in can be really, really annoying because you have to manually turn this thing. So I wish there was more to that. Shouldn't be too difficult to customize if you wanted to, but I think it's a bit strange that it does not come like customized by default because yeah. Yeah, this feels very inconvenient, especially for little kids playing with this. Not the biggest fan of how this play feature is done. But there we go, there it is all rolled up again. Out of the front hood of the fire truck, you have a printed piece right here with the fire logo on it. I do really love the streak of neon yellow throughout this build because it's not overbearing, but it fits really well as an accent and just helps make the overall red of this build look less flat. There's two seats in this truck, one for each firefighter that comes in this set, and the doors on the side of the fire truck can open up to let them in there. However, if you want easier access, you can also take the roof off at the top, and there's how those seats look from the inside. The front seat just has a steering wheel, and then it looks out the windshield of the truck, but the back seat has a little keyboard and computer screen, both of which are printed, so you can imagine the firefighter back here like running diagnostics on something, or controlling the drones, which we'll see later in this set. Moving back, again, I love this neon yellow streak. I think the angles right here are done perfectly, and this is also a little door that can be opened up. There's a matching one on the other side too, so you can open either one or both, and inside this is one of the remote-controlled vehicles for the firefighters. So you can pull that out, and you can see it's got a little robot arm on it. The base of the arm's on a mini ball joint, but then there's also a tactic pin in the center for it to move, and this feels like a very realistic robot arm to me. It moves the same way like I've seen robot arms move in like videos and whatnot, and of course they'll claw at the very end can twist too, so you can give this an accessory such as a fire extinguisher or a saw. In fact here, here's the saw that comes on the side of the truck, so that way this little remote control car can perform tasks for the firefighters in areas that are like too dangerous for them to go into. Real quick because I forgot to mention it, that saw comes in this clip right here on the side of the fire truck, and there's a matching clip on the other side which comes with an axe. I don't believe it's new, but this is my first time getting this firefighter axe piece and it is a really good part. Amazing dual molding there, really intricate shaping. It's one that I'm very happy to get. But now moving further back on the vehicle, you can see it continues to be quite bulky. And then coming around to the very end, there's a ladder hanging off. There's a ladder on the top of the vehicle too, and these two are connected and can be removed. And this is meant to be a ladder for the firefighters to, of course, fight fires with. So you can pose them like this so they have access to like higher, hard to reach areas. And yeah, I think this is a good inclusion. The letter is an iconic part of like any firefighting kit. So it makes sense for it to be included here. And I like how it incorporates into the build, but it's also just separatable as its own thing. If you want to reattach the ladder, you can plop it on these two jumper pieces and then you fold the base back down around the back. But for now, we're going to keep it removed because there is something underneath the ladder. You can see there's a few propellers right here. That's because this is actually a removable drone. The drone has two stud shooters on it, as well as the four propellers that you just saw. It uses that same like printed fire logo piece. And other than that, it's just a pretty standard build. Nice shape to it, fairly big, but works what it wants to be. The stud shooters are meant to shoot out water, or actually just one of them is. You push down to this one on the left, and a little blue tile will shoot out. There you go, just trans blue tile. While the one on the right shoots out a sparkly white stud. There's how that looks up close. I think this is probably originally from like Lego Dots or something. And that one's meant to represent foam. So you can fight the fires using either water or foam. It's up to you. Speaking of, coming back to the truck now around the back, there's two mailbox pieces here, which if you open up, the top one has extra studs for the foam in it, and the bottom one has extra tiles for the water in it. So that way, if you lose the studs or you just want to reload them, these boxes provide a nice way to store the extras and also just make sense thematically, right? The water and the foam would be kept inside of the truck. And that's not all for the water and the foam too, because something I purposely left out earlier is this giant turret on top of the truck. You may have seen these turrets before you push back on this red piece at the back and a giant bolt will shoot out. Now these turrets have been used in Lego City fire sets before, 
or in specifically trans blue to represent water. And while that is the case again here, you see you open up the left side, pour this out, and there's one of those trans blue water blasts. But there's also what I believe is a new color. This may not be new. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is new for this set. You open up the right side and you can get out a sparkly white foam blast instead. Either one of these can be loaded into the turret at the top, press the red button, and you can shoot at any fire you see. And of course it works with the water blast too. The turret's a very fun piece, and the foam versus water is a nice way to mix things up, give kids playing with this more options, so I'm actually quite a big fan of that. And that's just about it for the main build of this set. However, there is one more thing with the truck, the remote control car, and the little drone. You see, they each have an attachment on them. The drone has the stud shooter, the truck has the little hook, and the car has the robot arm, but each of those can be removed and swapped around with each other. You see, if I just pull this white section off right here, it uses this clip connection system, which I believe was first introduced for LEGO Monkey Kid last year. You could do the same thing with the truck, and with the drone, and you can swap around the pieces to whatever ones you want. So if I wanted, I could put the hook on the drone, there's how that looks. I could give the robot arm to the truck, which is goofy, but I honestly kind of love it. And then I could give these stud shooters to the little car. Yeah, any of the three attachments can attach to any of the three vehicles. And I love that they had the option to just mix them up if you want. And the drone's still able to be stored away in the top of the truck, even if it's got the bigger attachment on it now. Just click it in place like that, put the ladder back on around it, put the little car away too. And there we go, everything's switched up, but they still incorporate back into the main build really nicely. Now coming to the side builds of this set, there's two small ones. First, you have this little forest area, there's like this little hideout for this rabbit, a little tree at the top, and of course this fire sitting at the top. This fire is not actually connected, just sort of sits up here, and that's because you're supposed to aim at it with either the stud shooters or the giant water blaster to try to knock it over. Here, let's see if I can do that real quick. There we go, I got it. I saved the rabbit. The tree is also designed to be able to easily fall over, so that could be another objective, like lifting the tree back up. And then the rabbit is not a new part for this set, but it's a very uncommon part, I believe it was introduced this year, and it's bigger than just the standard Lego bunny mold, and it's quite a good one. Much more realistic than the smaller bunny. Smaller bunny's fine for like a little bunny, but this is a much better rabbit. Glad to see it's coming in more sets, because I believe it only came in a Lego City mission set previously, so I'm happy to have more ways to get it. And then the other side building the set's this little electrical box, and it's a very simple build, and there's not a ton to this one. You can imagine it catching on fire and that knocking over this pole right here, and you can see the fire comes up. Then you do the same thing where you have to aim at the fire, knock it off, and then you can have the robot arm or the drone or something come in to fix the pole at the top. Yeah, I think that's fun for play. I'm glad this set provides ways to actually use all the different play features on the truck. So here are the first two minifigures in the set. We have two firefighters. Now, I don't think I've ever gotten a LEGO City fire set before this one, so I apologize if I'm talking about old figures that you guys already know about, but to me, everything here is new because I've never had any of this in my collection before, so I'm going to be talking about these figures as if they're new for this year, even if they aren't. I don't believe the fire outfit on the female minifigure is new, but I have no clue about the outfit on the male minifigure, but yeah, we'll start with this one. I really love the mold for the firefighting helmet on this character, the neon yellow is an interesting color, but I honestly think it fits quite well. It is dual molded with the black, and it looks like some of the black bleeds through, so that's not the best look, but I also think it works well enough. The colors don't have to be exactly perfect for something like this, so I don't mind that bleed so much, and I think the shaping of that mold just looks fantastic all around. Removing that helmet piece, though, there you can see her full face print, which is just a generic female headpiece. Quite big eyebrows on her, but that's a nice smile expression to get. No alternate face, unfortunately, but I think that's fine. Torso print, kind of generic firefighter design. I like the brown straps of the belt at the base, and of course the metallic silver printing is cool too. I wish that neon green slash yellow was printed to be a bit more vibrant, to maybe match the hat better, because unfortunately it does look a bit dull, but it's not the biggest deal, and I think the red at the top does look good. See, so yeah, I think this is an all-around solid firefighter. Cool one to add to my collection, but LEGO City figures are usually nothing all too crazy. This guy though, however, I really love. He uses silver as his base color, which is really cool. Very similar like strap and belt design, but then he uses the classic LEGO firefighter helmet, which has like the second piece pieces an attachment which connects to these scuba tanks. I remember having this piece when I was a kid and I'm surprised it's still in production, but I guess if it's not broke don't fix it, cause yeah this works really well. The blue tanks do maybe feel a little bit out of place but I think that's fine. The lime green on the hands is a cool splash of color. And taking the hat off, you can see there's how the attachment looks without the hat. You can flip the visor up now. You have a very interesting attachment piece. Then taking that off, you can have just the air tanks. And then with the air tanks off, there's how the minifigure looks. I like the happy yet sweaty face. Fits the firefighter very well. And it's also just a nice expression to have in your collection. And then the silver outfit around the back looks really good. I love that lime fire logo. Really, really cool minifigure all around. I kind of wish both of them were like this. But it is cool to get two variants here if you didn't have either. This guy also comes with like a little walkie-talkie as an accessory, which just has a printed control panel piece on it. Nothing new or special there, though. And then the other minifigure in the set is a construction worker. You can see he's wearing a high-vis jacket, which also uses that neon yellow color. Very 
very bright, but obviously makes sense for high vis. Silver printing on top of that, though. Honestly, a quite realistic design. He's got a teal shirt underneath, and then just plain blue unprinted pants. The coolest part about this guy, in my opinion, is the ponytail helmet combo piece. That is very cool to see. Not sure if that's new for this guy, but at the very least, I think the color combination might be new. And then he's got a double sided head where he's scared on one side, and then he's got a more neutral expression on the other. Very detailed face that I feel like you could make a lot of custom characters with. And I like that he does have a double sided face, because that's not always the most common in LEGO City sets. But yeah, nothing all too crazy because he is just a generic LEGO City civilian, but I still like him for what he is. And so, what are my overall thoughts on this set? I think this set's pretty good all around. I think it's definitely best for younger kids, and that is who the intended audience is. But yeah, play features are definitely the main focus here. However, that's not a bad thing. I genuinely had a lot of fun with this set, both putting it together and playing with it for this review. I like the options that has me able to switch around the parts on the drone, the car, and the truck. The removable ladder is a nice touch, and then the option between foam and water is also just another fun option. I feel like it just opens up to a lot of different play options, so I think for kids especially, this is a great set. For older collectors, I mean, it's fine. It is a really nice looking fire truck, but at this price point, I think there's a million other sets that look nicer, so I think it's definitely a better set for kids. But for kids, it is quite good. Price-wise, though, I will say it's a little bit expensive. Probably should have been closer to $50. All LEGO is expensive nowadays, especially LEGO City. But yeah, this one definitely could have been a bit cheaper. So I don't think I would recommend this set unless you find it on sale. But on sale, especially for younger kids, I think this is a fantastic set to pick up. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I have more early 2023 LEGO reviews coming very, very soon, as well as others already up on the channel. So by liking the video and subscribing, it'll help support me and will also help the algorithm show those videos to you. But as for this video, I think it's about all I have to say. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.